The charger needs brakes. So I got the old booster off of the charger and I figured I'd go ahead and show you guys the differences on how they're made. So obviously the uh, booster itself here is a smaller diameter but it's also uh, wider compared to the original and our master cylinder are different styles. This is more like what's on my dart, well this is the original charging one, as you can see this is what's on my dart right now. So the kit is really just meant to be like a universal fit for any kind of Mopar. So that's why they just add this extra bit here that this this piece here bolts to the firewall where on the original one the booster itself bolts to the firewall. This is more like an A body which is like on my dart. This is how they do it. They do it this way and it pulls it away from the firewall. It's much easier to do it this way because uh, pulling the old booster off was actually very hard. This piece right here is actually stationary inside and this bolts to your pedal and it works back and forth. Since this piece down here is stationary, it'll push the, uh, the diaphragm in and out. While on this one, you don't have anything like that on the inside. You actually have this bolt in, and everything's on the outside. So this will bolt to your pedal. That's all you need. You adjust it. It's got a lock nut or a jam nut, and it threads in and out. Adjust it to have you need it, and it'll push itself in and out right here. So a little different, but it'll work and do exactly what we need it to do. So I've already removed two of the fittings, but you really want to be careful if you're not replacing these fittings because I actually, let me grab it here, did this, ran it off this one fitting because it was a 3 8 and it was kind of too small and the uh, wrench didn't really fit it that well, so I had to cut the brake line and then put a socket on it, but I've got new fittings anyway so it doesn't really matter, but if you're, if you're reusing this stuff you really want to be delicate with this stuff, but uh, this one came free. Don't know about that one just yet, but I'm going to take all these off, pull the uh, distribution block off, clean it out and everything, and then I'll start running brake lines up to my master cylinder, and then we'll start figuring things out. So what I have here is 3 16 stainless steel brake line. This will be replacing all of my old stuff. And then here, I have an assortment of fittings. So what I've done here is disconnected pretty much all the ones from the proportioning valve and the distribution block here that uh, I'm going to replace. So I have to get this one out, but everything else is loose. I'm going to start running some lines from here to the master cylinder. But right now, uh, I don't have my flare tool yet, so I will have to wait on that, but I'll go ahead and start bending stuff and make it work. Here's one line already bent. Put the loop in and everything. And like I mentioned, none of it is flared, so it's all just kind of resting in there right now. But I'm not going to lie, it actually looks pretty good. And I will give you guys a disclaimer, I have never made my own uh, brake lines or fuel lines just from scratch. I've only taken existing ones and bent them to make them work how I needed to. So this is all kind of a new process to me. So, you know, for the first time, I don't, I don't think it's that bad. There's your bend, and like I mentioned, it's not flared or anything, it's not even tight. But it bends down, comes over here, goes down, does our loop, and I made that using an aerosol can so I wanted to like do this to show you how that you can do this on your own and you don't have to buy the pre-bent stuff if you can't afford it because that stuff is kind of expensive on a car like this you can buy pre-bent stuff or if it's a car that doesn't have pre-bent uh, stuff you can buy then let's see how you can make your own so that's what I wanted to do I wanted to do the first one on my own that way I can figure out how I could show you guys what I did and I'll just show you what I do on this next one so before I really go into depth of explaining all this, I just want to tell you that this really isn't anything that's like impossible for the average person to do. I did this, I've never done this before, this is the first time I've ever made a brake line. Normally I'll just like use what's there, or like if I'm doing a fuel line I'll take what I already have, bend it to make it work, you know. So this is all stuff that anybody can do, and I, I'm not using any special tools besides 
this uh, pipe cutter here, which you know anybody can get one of these. It's not that expensive. And then I'll have a flare kit, which I, I don't have it yet. So as you can see, you know I've already made one, but it's not flared. So I'll have to come back and make all that. But all this stuff I built with like basic hand tools, and then actually by hand. I did all these bins, these simple bins by hand. So it's nothing that you can't do. But what I wanted to do is show you how I did it. I did the first one by myself without videoing it just so I could like get a feel of what to expect and how I did it. So that way I could explain it to you. But what I did, I, I put the fitting in here. I put the actual line through it and then threaded it in. And then I started to make my bends starting from the master cylinder and working my way down. I thought it was easier that way so I could you know, make my bends and unravel all this stuff that I have here and then make it work. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just start with our master cylinder bend. So what I'm going to do is just take and put a pretty, pretty gradual bend in here. Just something that's like that'll get me facing downwards. Okay. And this is all stainless steel, by the way. I got it from Summit, so it's not not that expensive. I don't remember how much it cost, but it wasn't much. Go down here and work a bend. Now, I'm probably going to get a bunch of hate comments, you know, but you're not supposed to do it this way or that way, but I don't see anything wrong with it, so if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Start you in there. And what I'll do is I'll actually go and, since I, I don't want to, like, ruin this bend right here, I'll probably just cut this off and bring it in closer because I, I like the way that this bend is shaped and I don't want to like mess that up and kink it again. This is probably going to be a little bit difficult to film but now, th now that I've got my uh, new line here where I want it, I'm just going to start to bend it to match right here. I want them to run side by side and then I'll get this loop down here as close as possible and then once I get down from there they'll split and then this, this uh, new line will go where it needs to go. So let me see if I can work my way and make this contour the same. Your loop and there you have it wasn't too bad I'm gonna go back and do some fine little details to kind of straighten it out in some areas like right there you can see straight ahead I'd like to uh, open up that gap a little bit so they're running parallel but you know for the most part it's really good and for bending up you know brake lines for the first time it doesn't look that bad I'm really impressed by it from this side they really look good which is where you'll see them most often because you know, once the engines in the car you won't be able to see like any kind of imperfections down low or anything so right here is really where it matters and as you can see it looks really really good honestly I'm I didn't know that this would be so much fun it's actually really entertaining to do all this so if you really need to make some lines of any sort it's really not that big of a deal to do it buy you some good quality stuff and it won't kink you know it I really worked this stuff I worked it back and forth constantly and I never once got a kink in it anywhere so if I can do it anybody can do what I just did so we have the proportioning valve actually mounted inside the car the reason that I did that was so we can easily have our own makeshift line lock I have to credit Invincible Extremes for giving me this idea but basically Say you want to do a burnout, see how it says increase, decrease, you know, just turn it, decrease the pressure to the rear brakes, because this is controlling the rear brakes, not the front, and decrease the pressure, do a burnout, then whenever you're done, increase it, get it back to where you want it, you're good. I used an existing hole that all I did was take the original grommet there and cut a splice in it and then uh, run them both through it, so 
no drilling. I did have to steal the calipers for the car and put them on the dart because the dart needed a set to go on power tour so ordered another set of calipers for this not this car but this car actually I may just swap them over because I want these specifically for this car ordered a set for a car like this because they're basically the exact same but you know it'll, it'll all work either way but I may swap these over just to be on the safe side just in case something was weirdly wrong with them but anyways now that I have all of that mounted I also got my rebuilt steering box in and didn't come with a pitman arm I thought it would come with a new one but fortunately it did not I ordered a new pitman arm it's actually over in another box but they looks like they sandblasted it I don't know if I might have to clear it but anyways what I'll do I got a new steering coupler that will go here right on this end this is actually for the that goes to the steering column I have a new like the rubber piece that goes on the steering coupler itself you know just to make it look nice and everything uh, once that comes in I will add that to the steering column and then I'll be able to slide this on and then bolt our pitman arm onto here then we will be able to bolt it onto our center link and we can steer the car once more so it's all, it's all coming together and once we get that together the main goal really is to get this car to where I can move it under its own power while I work on it so once all of that's done as far as steering and making it be able to stop itself because I still have to do the rubber lines and everything and whatnot so once all that's done the engine will start to get some work haven't torn it down anymore since the last video that you guys saw so I still have to take sorry it's dark but have to take the harmonic balancer off timing cover timing chain and pull the cam out flip it over and pull the pan once this car can be steerable and stoppable on its own power we will take and start tearing into this engine so like you've seen before this is the 440 and start doing some work with it get all of that together and we'll throw it in there do like a like just a little bit of makeshift wiring just enough to make it run that way I can move the car in and out without having to push it because it's kind of a, a nuisance at the moment I honestly didn't think this car had been sitting that long until I found this spider webs eggs you name it I don't like it oh this is disgusting hmm. I gotta move this thing I am quickly running out of unboxing space on the charger but the good news is still got this room right here so this is my pitman arm like I mentioned I forgot where I ordered this from I think it was Summit but I don't remember good news is no more bolt cutters for us let's open this up and see what it looks like Yeah, this is from Summit. Proforged. It's like a decent box. I don't know if I've ever bought anything from them before. It had good reviews on it, so I went with it. Yeah, that looks like it'll work. I'm just going to leave it in the plastic because I don't want to have to mess with it, but yeah. Does it come with a fitting? A grease fitting? Oh, there it is. Okay. There's a grease fitting, cotter pin, it's all in there. Let it burn, burn, baby, let it burn. When I'm sick of hanging around here, waiting for the tide to turn. It don't matter if it's far or near, just as long as I get out of here. It is a car once more. Check out all this junk that was on it. So I put these wheels and tires on it as rollers. So these will be kind of what I want to go with, but with white letters. Kind of gets you an idea of what I have. Put the hood back on it just so I could see what it looks like once more. Flames light up the sky Blow my kisses I wave goodbye 
So the car obviously needed to be cleaned up because I had it looking like a shelf. I had all my boxes and parts and tools all over the car. So it looks a lot better now. I threw the hood back on it just because I wanted to see what it looked like as a car once more. So let's pop the hood and I'll show you what's under here when we've done off camera. So the good news is our steering box is in. All of our suspension is done up front. Let me go grab a light so you can see it better. As you can see, there it is. And that was the remanufactured one. I went and just got it rebuilt. Uh, I had a, a local store here that they had a really good uh, system that they have. They said they trusted the company rebuilt it, so I went with it. But yeah, everything is suspension-wise and steering is pretty much good. I still need to get a high-pressure line going to the power steering pump and then a return line to make it. And I had a new steering coupler there, so all of that's new. It looks really good. I have to clean up all this wiring here, get rid of all that nonsense, pick up the tools. But the car looks a whole lot better, and it was nice to push it outside and really clean it up. I was excited about that because, you know, it kind of I kind of got burnt out because there was so many things that I was just trying to tackle all at once with this and the Dart and then Oldsmobile, Cordoba. Just you know, I was going back and forth between too many things and. Getting this thing to where I can push it and roll it out it was a really big accomplishment for me. So now that I'm after that point, I feel a lot better continuing forward. So the next situation I want to work on is getting the calipers on the front because, like I mentioned, I stole them for the dart. And then adding the rubber lines as far as the brakes go. That way we can have all of our brake system completely done and ready to go. Because at that point we can start doing engine stuff and get it moving on its own power. Still need to do the sway bar. I mean, it's not going to hold it up anything, but need to do that at some point. So, yeah. I'm liking it. Right now, I'm going to push it out so I can clean the shop up. Because all I did was just clean the car off. So, let's do that. So we got a lot done in this video guys and that's going to end it here. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like down below if you liked the video. If you have a question for me, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email. Also send in your projects to that same email. Order your t-shirts and your stickers. And if you noticed, the charger's outside. And it's because of this. But you'll find out why next week. Let it burn.